Hello friends and welcome to another episode of the Green New Perspective podcast, your go-to place when you want to learn about innovations happening within clean tech, nature tech, biotech and agri-tech space. In today's episodes, we are wondering how sustainable are our digital lives and businesses. My guest today is Fabio Macaroni, Marketing Director of Karma Metrics, a company that measures, calculates and improves the environmental sustainability of your websites. Stay tuned and find out how much water we use by making just one prompt in ChatGPT. Enjoy! Hi Fabio and welcome to the Green New Perspective podcast. Hi Dunia and thank you for having invited me. So can you tell me and our audience a bit more about yourself and Karma Metrics, what you're doing? I've been graduated in economy management. Then I started a path uh, of working with uh, uh, analysis, marketing analysis, more uh, of that. And then uh, I came to the first uh, company of the inventor of Karma Metrics, which is a SEO company. So I was uh, working on SEO. And then we stumbled with the sustainability for, for chance, I would say, because uh, one of our customers says, uh, asked us uh, if uh, what we do on the SEO part, on the optimization part, may have uh, some kind of environmental impact. We didn't know it, <laughs> so we, we had to make some researches and we find out that uh, the internet has uh, an environmental impact. And that's uh, why our founder decided to create uh, Karma Metrics, uh, which works uh, in the field of the digital sustainability. And uh, uh, we have an algorithm that uh, can measure the, the CO2 emissions caused by a website. So mainly that's uh, what we do. We are, uh, we say a journey of digital sustainability that helps the companies to measure and improve their digital impact. And can you tell me more about the impact of all this digital space on the environment? Yes, usually people don't think about it because, you know, you, you don't see the, the smoke coming out from a PC unless it is <laughs> on fire. And but yeah, the digital, well, the, uh, the, sorry for interrupting you, but when we're talking mm -hmm. about sustainability, people are usually recommending to go paperless and to go full digital, yes. not actually thinking about the impact of digital space and sustainability. Yes, of course. Surely the digital part uh, is better than uh, the offline part. Okay, so having a PDF, uh, of course, is better than having uh, a printed paper. But if we, we consider uh, the whole digital impact, uh, if it would be a country, it would be the fourth country in the world for CO2 emissions and the third country in the world for energy consumptions. Why is that? Because most of the energy produced in the world still comes from the fossil fuels. The 60% of the energy worldwide produced still comes from fossil fuels. And of course, when we consume energy, we have a carbon footprint too. And so that's very big. It is almost the double of the the aircraft pollution. Okay, so that's a very big impact. I made a research last year on the five big techs, the American big techs, which are Amazon, Apple, Google, Microsoft, and Meta. Only those five companies pull together, they have the same emissions as, for example, a country like Belgium. Okay, so five companies are like a whole country. And there still wasn't all the impact that came from the development of the AI. So that's a huge impact and it will, of course, uh, uh, always grow. What technologies and methodologies do you employ to assess and improve the eco-friendliness of digital products? At the moment, we only are focused on the website part because uh, we are young. So we started with one thing, uh, the websites, but we are developing uh, how to measure and reduce the impact of the emails and of the uh, smartphones app. Okay, so at the moment we have an algorithm. This algorithm makes uh, an estimation of the carbon footprint of a website. And then uh, we had the companies with uh, a consultancy part uh, to understand what uh, on the website causes more emissions and how they can improve it. I'll make an example. Mm -hmm. Choosing the colors of a website may have an impact uh, on uh, the carbon footprint because brighter colors like the white are more impacting, uh, for example, than uh, the black one. So if you make uh, a black screen, a black website, it may pollute six times less uh, than a white uh, website. And then there is uh, all the question about uh, the CSS files, the JavaScript files. Okay, so it becomes very technical. Uh, the, um, the heavy of the 
of the images. So there are more than 20, 30 parameters we consider in our analysis and we help the companies to make their website much more eco-friendly. We are average on a 30% reduction of emissions with our path, but we had clients that went up to 90% of the reduction. And if wow. we... <laughs> and how do you measure those impacts? We have an algorithm that uh, it's a patented one, and mm -hmm. it may take consideration of all these parameters. It uh, calculates uh, how much energy consumptions uh, they are causing. And then uh, uh, by considering the mixed energy, is how it? the energy is produced, uh, we make the estimation of the uh, carbon footprint of the website. And um, how do you feel the companies should do and think beyond just the website to address the sustainability holistically, let's say? They are doing a lot of requests about it. That's why mm -hmm. we are not only thinking about the website, but we are uh, expanding and uh, going to measure many other things. They are starting to ask us, for example, not only, as I uh, already said, the, the emails uh, or the, the web apps or the apps, uh, they are starting to ask us uh, if they can measure the, ha the hardware mm -hmm. in their company, all what they are using inside the company on a digital uh, aspect. Uh, we are thinking about it. <laughs> we need time to develop, to make the studies, but our vision is to make the whole digital more sustainable. And so mm -hmm. we're trying to add a piece uh, at a time. And um, what are the biggest misconceptions about web sustainability or digital sustainability you encountered during this journey of yours? That people think usually that uh, it is an um, endless resource. It's because of uh, it is proposed to us. Okay, if you think about uh, having the internet connection with unlimited traffic, uh, having those uh, storage uh, with a lot of gigabytes, terabytes of space for uh, just a few euros. Uh, so people think that it's endless. It's almost endless. They don't think about the fact that the more they use it, the more the impact uh, of it uh, it is. An example I usually uh, like to make uh, is uh, with photographies. A digital photo has uh, a less impact that, uh, than a printed photo. But it's the same uh, if we make uh, 100,000 photos, because, you know, with the uh, classic uh, uh, photography, you make one, ten photos when you're on vacation. Now with the, vast, the smartphone, you make thousands of photos. And uh, only the storaging of thousand photos uh, is almost uh, 50 kilos of CO2 emissions. Okay, so we have to learn to use uh, more accurate way the digital. Mm -hmm. And do you feel that companies or people, you mentioned photography here, which is something that we all do, are yes. educated enough about digital sustainability? They are not. Uh, that's why we are uh, working a lot on awareness too. So we go, for example, in the universities uh, to make some lessons about it. Uh, we make it uh, in the companies, uh, internal lessons, internal uh, education, so they can use uh, the internet, uh, the digital part better when they work uh, and in their uh, uh, private life too. For example, making uh, the cleaning the photos on the files from, um, from the smartphone. Uh, uh, don't make uh, three, four, five backups of the data because uh, it's not necessary unless you're a bank. <laughs> That's a bit more important. So um, using the, um, uh, the dark mode, that helps a lot. Uh, in um, You can see it uh, uh, concretely when you see how long the battery lasts. So um, I make another example. When we make uh, all those uh, uh, working meetings, all with the camera on, uh, you don't need the camera on for all the people. Maybe it's all, only for the ones that are talking because that consumes a lot of energy. I invite you and everyone to make uh, um, a test mm -hmm. and try to see from uh, the laptop the estimated uh, um, time left of the battery when you are in a meeting and when you are not. When you are in a meeting, the estimated left time of the battery may be cut off in a half. And with camera off? With camera off, it goes a bit higher. <laughs> <laughs> and do clients approach to you who are, well, interested to, to lower their carbon emissions or do you go to them? Usually companies are very focused on lowering their carbon emissions in some different sections, not in the digital space. Yes, of course. Usually we have to find them. We have to push them because if you want to improve something, the first things you have to do is to know it. Okay, so as long as the people and the companies 
don't know that uh, the internet causes emissions, can't think about making something about it. So that's why we have to do a lot uh, of awareness. We have to go searching for them. But uh, what I see is that uh, whenever we contact them and we explain what we are doing, there is a lot of curiosity. So everyone is saying, really? <laughs> And um, what was the biggest surprise for you working in camera metrics on the side of your offerings? The biggest uh, surprise were mainly two, I would say. One is uh, when uh, we made a project, uh, the journey with one of the biggest Italian uh, websites, which is Gadetello Spot. It is a um, newspaper uh, talking about spot. They did it with us and when they have the, their emis emissions, they lowered the emissions by 3,000 tons of CO2. I would imagine a single website may have uh, such an higher impact. That was really impressive. And I am wondering if uh, a website that has a worldwide uh, um, knowledge, which is known worldwide, with a lot more traffic than a national website, how big can uh, its impact be? So that's uh, very, very interesting. And the other thing was when I made the research about uh, how big is the impact of the uh, artificial intelligence. And for example, about uh, ChatGPT, mm -hmm. when I was searching about it, I found uh, a study that said that uh, uh, the water footprint of uh, training uh, um, an AI like ChatGPT consumes uh, as much water as a nuclear reactor. So that's another part we are trying to introduce, not only calculating the CO2 impact of a website, but the carbon footprint too, because all the servers, all the data centers, they need to be cooled with water at the moment. And so they have a really big impact on that aspect too. Yeah, I suppose the people are not thinking about water consumption when they're doing their research via ChatGPT or some other AI yeah. platform. I mean, is that a single um, question made to ChatGPT may consume up to half a liter of water. Well, I didn't know that. That's so interesting. Um, and where do you see the biggest challenges in introducing website sustainability? The biggest challenge is not only to make people aware of it, but uh, to make them understand how big can be the impact uh, of the website. So we, we can talk of thousands of tons of impact. We said before, it is the third country in the world uh, by CO2 emissions. Imagine if uh, a country like India or Russia cuts uh, their emissions uh, by a 30%. It is a huge impact on the world uh, environment. So if everyone is aware of it and makes his part uh, on the digital side, it can have a really uh, important uh, impact uh, on the environmental system. And what else is needed for, for digital website sustainability to reach a tipping point? Let's say um, regulation, education, we mentioned already education. Something else maybe aside from that? Sure, education, but I think uh, that a big part must come from the regulation, of course. I always think that the two parts, uh, may, uh, they need to go together. I make an example about... Uh, um, the big, uh, um, the big trend uh, of the diets, okay? People making attention about calories of the products they buy and so on. Why they make attention to the calories? Because uh, it is easy to know the calories of a product. You have uh, in almost every country the obligation to put the, the calories uh, on, uh, on the packaging, okay? So imagine if you have the obligation uh, to make the carbon impact of the product on every on every package and the, the same on the website and so on. If people have the information uh, with uh, an easy accessibility, they start to look at them, they to make confrontation. They start to make choices uh, about the information that they have. The more we make it uh, needed to give information to the people, the more they can choose uh, in a good way. Mm -hmm. And what advice would you give to companies who are just starting to think about digital sustainability? Where should they begin? The first thing we always uh, suggest is to start with the miseration. So be aware of the impact of your website, because uh, sometimes we found uh, websites that uh, were already sustainable. So they, do, they didn't need to do some something about it. They worked on other aspects of the website uh, and by chance they had a sustainable website. 
So that's the first part of all. How with no big is the impact of your website? And then we can discuss about uh, having the whole journey in uh, improving the, the impact of the website. We have the free uh, demo of our, um, of our algorithm on the website. So everyone can go there and, for example, test the homepage and mm -hmm. uh, have an idea of the average uh, uh, emissions of of, uh, of the website. Then, of course, it is not complete because we have, we have to gather some information, which server the companies have, for example, and so on. But it's a good start to understand the, more or less the impact of the website. And do you have some offerings for companies that are working fully remotely, like ours, for example? We do have a website, but all of our business is on cloud. Uh, yes, because uh, even if the website uh, is, for example, on a green cloud, the cloud isn't the part that uh, impacts uh, impacts the most. The cloud may be around uh, five and fifteen percent of the emission correlated to a website, but the biggest part uh, is uh, from the end user device. So making your website more sustainable helps to make uh, the end user more sustainable too. So it is important not only to think, okay, I have a, a data center, I have a cloud hosted on a, on a green cloud, which only uses renewable uh, energy. It is not enough because as I said before, 60% of the energy still comes from fossil fuels. So a website needs uh, any way, in my opinion, to, to be assessed and improved in case they need it. The last question for you is if you had, let's say, a magic wand to change something about sustainability, not just digital sustainability, but overall, uh, what would it be and why? You think uh, one, uh, one thing that can change? Yeah, whatever you wish to change, like in a day, if you had a magic wand. Ah, that's a good question. Getting rid of the fossil fuels may be the, <laughs> the most important thing. All uh, going uh, <laughs> totally on uh, renewable energies because it uh, will solve a lot of problems. Not every problem, because as I said, even if you uh, have no emissions, there are a lot of other problems, the, the soil, the water consumption and so on, but at least we solve one big problem. Well, thank you, Fabio, and I wish you all the best in your business to improve the digital sustainability of website and well, to raise awareness about the issue, uh, which is also a very important thing that you're doing. Thank you very much. And tell us, um, tell me, well, and our audiences, where people can find you, um, where they can write to you uh, and get informed more about what you're doing, get in touch with you. So they can contact us from our website, which is karmametrics.com, or they can write directly to me on LinkedIn. Okay. Thank you. Thank you once again. Bye. Well, this marks the end of another episode of the Green New Perspective podcast. If you're curious about innovative tech aimed at combating climate change, consider subscribing to our podcast on your favorite streaming platform. We are available everywhere from Spotify to YouTube, and we are hosting CEOs, product management, chief technology officers, marketing managers, sustainability managers from all over the world who are working in clean tech, nature tech, biotech, and agri-tech space. This episode is proudly sponsored by New Perspective, a Boston-based marketing agency working with clean tech clients only. And if you're curious about how the agency can help your clean tech business to grow, click in the link in the description of this episode and find out how sustainable and ethical marketing can actually change the world. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did and hopefully I see you in the next one. Bye!